from listening what is the, the thing sarvanam kirtanam right yeah, yeah, yeah. take the bit of malana sound sound is means sarvanam everything will start with that right or not Yeah. Sravanam mm. and Kirtanam. Mm. What I listen, my mind works like that. So jingling of ankle bell is a so beautiful sound, like a flute of Krishna is a sound. The gopis are listening from the distance. Is this is the sound, because their air was so clean, they can listen that. Mm. My air is so blocked with listening of the material subjects that it has become thicker to not to listen that jingling. So it's a sound, my dear. That air has to be purified. That I can reach to the flute and the jingling of anchor bell. <clears throat> to come in rhythm. We are not in rhythm because we are not in the music jingling thing. Anchor bell cannot move. Without rhythm, mm. without flute, mm. you can somebody can dance without ankle uh, sound, without drum, without rhythm. There is no dance. We are dancing, means we have activities in life without rhythm. Our rhythm is no rhythm. We are dancing, we are working in the material life, but we are dancing for our jingling. We are jingling ourselves, means suffering, and this is jingling, right? Mm. Jingling yeah. is what. Work means you have to walk, you have to move, you have to do something. To, then the ankle will be jingling, jingling. Mm-hmm. Right. Go on. It's so beautiful, man. When we do everything one pointed in this consciousness, then. Every sound became a jingling, and and rhythm. We will dance in rhythm, not my rhythm. Not my rhythm. We are dancing. Everyone is dancing in my rhythm. I my rhythm. I'm dancing. You rhythm. You dancing. You rhythm. You dancing. You. There is no one rhythm player, and for that we are dancing. That's the problem. Every individual has his different rhythm. So, how to change our rhythm? That is the point in life. To listen, highest jingling bell. We are. My, I'm listening. My jingling, jingling, miss, jingling. 
tinkling, my problems, my problems, my problems. It's boring. <laughs> right? It's boring. Mm. Yeah? Only a faint reflection of the illumination of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami's love in separation from Swamini. Love, when there is the love, then you feel separation. Hmm. Love in separation. Hmm. <laughs> If you have no love, what you will feel separation. Mm -hmm. So, separation not exists without love. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, Mahaprabhu teaching is separation. So, they say separation, behind that separation is love. Why you feel separation from Krishna or Balram? Because you love him. Reason behind separation is your love. Right or not? Right. Love makes you to feel separation. How intense you have a love, how intense you feel separation. Everybody mm -hmm. understand this. Mm -hmm. It's not a philosophy, it's a feeling. It's a feeling, yeah. Mm. Yeah, right. <coughs> Nothing to... But understand. only you read this, you cannot understand this. You will not catch this point. Yeah. Mm. It has to be cultivated in real life. And that, that you can realize that Hmm. Separation, any, anything I feel separation when I have a love. And how much intense of love, that moment you feel so much separation with that. Mm -hmm. But if I love Radhika, then I have a feeling of separation. When I love someone, then I feel separation. I have no love. I have a neutral position. How I will feel separation? <coughs> Is it not also in the same time when I have love for Radhika and I am one pointed? Um, in this relationship, in this connection with Radhika, mm. that even more and more um, I can feel everywhere her connection. Right. And then desire happen that how I can live in your service all the time. Right. When I want to be in your service all the time, then I want to go from my physical body yeah. to spiritual body. Right. And then when I come to the physical body, I feel separation because I can serve you in my spiritual body. Mm -hmm. Then there is a slogan, Toy as me, toy as me. Yeah. I cannot live without you because I already for not forgetting my identification, what is very condition, and if I, I not come to my spiritual body, I cannot reach to serve you. Yes. You know, Gurudev, last winter when you sent me to the uh, mountain hotel, 
I was really feeling that you ask me something what I really not was thinking it is what I would desire or what I would but I knew you you wanted that I go there and then it became uh, really everything it became a pleasure because I knew it is everything Seva I have not to separate what is in my home because Gurudev you asked me to you do it say to that yes my husband has has hotel English English yeah yes yeah yes and uh, the whole life I was always thinking it's not so spiritual it's so material ma- material mm-hmm. and Gurudev wanted really that I work there and I was a little bit mm-hmm. I had a leader position I was for everything and I was working like never before in my life wow. and I, I knew Gurudev asked me to do this so it's right I did I have I had no doubt I, it was a pleasure to do it I, I just hoped inside that I will have enough time for my diksha and chanting mm-hmm. because the days we, mm-hmm. it was a lot of energy mm-hmm. I was worried about, but it was no problem. Mm-hmm. When the day was long, I get I was awakened in night time, and I, wow. every I had energy like never before, wow. and it was this <coughs> feeling. Mm-hmm. Gurudev helped me so much with this experience mm-hmm. that <coughs> I I learned that mm-hmm. everything is seva mm-hmm. when we do it in this mood. Yeah, yeah. Guru have always told everything can be seva. Everything can be seva. When you fix one point. When you fix, yes. If you no fix one point, you do for yourself. You live in goodness only. Yeah. And then when you live in one pointedness, what is not seva? Even when you sleep or eat? <laughs> Anything. Yeah. Everything is Seva. Seva can be very active but also very quiet. First you have to decide you want to be religious or spiritual. Mm-hmm. Religious seva is different, its spiritual seva is different. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Religious seva you have to show to everyone, and in spiritual seva you have to practice within yourself mm-hmm. how to develop you. Mm-hmm. Maybe nobody will see you. Yes. But you are doing. Mm-hmm. You know better, other will not know. Mm-hmm. That is a spiritual life. Mm-hmm. And you will hide this, you will grow faster. Mm-hmm. You will open your spiritual seva, you will be, lose yourself mm-hmm. too faster. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now go on. Only a faint reflection of the illumination of Srila Raguna Das Goswami's love in separation from Swamini is revealed through the syllables of this Vilab Kushumanshali. Krishna himself descended to earth as Gora to experience his own sweetness and the sweetness of Srimati Radhika's love for him. For this he became Virahi, experiencing separation 
from himself and taught all the sadhakas of the world that one must first experience viraha before being able to relish Milan meeting. In this way, he increases the Prema Sindhu, the ocean of love of his devotees. Srila Raghunadas Goswami also relishes Sri Radhika's sweetness through Viraha. Although he's a, her eternally perfect maidservant, <clears throat> Sri Radhika always acts for Krishna's welfare. Therefore, she is named Kalyani here. Nanda Maharaj daily feeds millions of brahmanas for Krishna's Kalyana and Mother Yasoda gets up early every morning to pronounce mantras for Krishna's protection before he goes out into the forest. See, Krishna's constitutionally transcendental name is the fruit of the wine of all Vedas is sweeter than sweet and more auspicious than all that is auspicious. But Sri Radhika is auspicious even for him. This can be nicely illustrated by the following song of Govinda Das describing Radha and Krishna's Purvarag, beginnings of love, Vanduti, girl messenger, came to see Radhika to tell her how much Krishna is in love with her. Radhe, when Zubal gives Krishna a golden garland of Champaka flowers, his mind trembles and tears of passionate love flow from his eyes. Why? My question is why? Because the golden garland reminds him of Radharani. Yeah. And he feels Missing. her love with this. Missing. Missing. Missing her. Vira. And then he's in ecstasy. Oh, beautiful girl, your form always awakens great love in his heart. Day and night he murmurs, Prisavanu Nandini, without saying anything else out of confusion. Although Hundreds of thousands of girls speak sweet words to him. He does not listen to them, even in dreams. He can only pronounce the first syllable of your name, Ra, but out of ecstasy he cannot pronounce 
the other one and her. His eyes carry streams of tears. That jewel of man rolls on the ground. Who can describe his distress? Govinda Das submits this news about Kanu, Krishna, to your lotus feet. Know that he feels miserable and that only your grace, Kalyana, can destroy his suffering. One morning, Radharani sees Krishna with the signs of Chantravali's love-making on his body. So she becomes angry with him and refuses to speak with him. Her shakis tell her, Radhe, the whole of Raja is miserably suffering because of your stubborn half towards Krishna. Everyone is unhappy except you. He, who is the life of the life of Raja, rolls on the crown and has given up eating and sleeping out of misery. He has become weak and skinny. Seeing his condition, all the mobile and immobile creatures of Raja are also loudly crying. Only you are happy, giving milk to the snake of your peak. Is that auspicious? That's not auspicious. Give up your peak. Out of separation, Sri Raghunada says, You are my Kalyani. Not only is Sri Radhika auspicious for Sri Krishna, she is auspicious to the whole world. For she gives joy to the world of God's pleasure potency, of which the essence is prema, love. She gives that transcendental loving ecstasy to all the devotees and thus sustains their lives. The Upanishads speak of Shreya. Kalyana or that which is good for us and prayer that what we like. The saints accept that what is auspicious and beneficial spiritual and lasting happiness and the fools accept that what they like most, temporary, mm. sensual happiness. And what is welfare? Srila Ramananda Rai said, there is no other welfare than association with Krishna's devotees. Uh -huh. From the viewpoint of Lila, Sri Radhika is indeed auspicious for the whole creation. Krishna creates the world through his Icha Shakti desire potency and what is his desire? He desires Radhika. Therefore, without her pleasure potency, the world cannot live. Without Krishna's desire personified by Radhika, there is no material world. And without the material world, there are no material bodies. And without material bodies, there is no sadhana. 
spiritual enlightenment. And without sadhana, there is no prema. This is underlined. Mm-hmm. Acha, you see. Again, they. <laughs> yes, please, they can read. <laughs> it's very beautiful. Slow. All the senses of a Chatarati Bhakta. Repeat this, you are going further. I repeat this, without Krishna's desire. Are, from beginning, what is the paragraph? The saints mm-hmm. accept that what is auspicious and beneficial spiritual and lasting happiness and the fools accept that what they like most temporary and sensual happiness and what is welfare Srila Ramananda Rai said there is no other welfare than association with Krishna's devotees. From the viewpoint of Lila, Shiradika is indeed auspicious for the whole creation. Krishna creates the world through his Icha Shakti, desire potency. And what is his desire? He desires Radhika. Therefore, without her pleasure potency, the world cannot live. Without Krishna's desire, personified by Radhika, there is no material world. Without the material world, there are no material bodies. Without material bodies, there is no sadhana, spiritual practice. And without sadhana, there is no brain. the senses of a, of a Jatarati Bhakta, a devotee who has attained a strong taste for bhajan, have become deaf for the impressions from the material world. He only hears Radhika's angle bells and he is not disturbed by material allurements. For him, the material world goes out of sight and the Nikuncha comes in sight. He hears Govinda's fluid and sees his bluish effulsions mixing with Radhika's golden effulsions. He feels the touch of their lotus feet. Sila Rupa Goswami says, Your speech is like a stream of nectar, so strong that it will flush the trees of my material existence away. And Govinda Kaviraj says, I have locked 
my outside door, my material lookout, and have opened my inside door. Underline this. It is also. Huh? It is also <laughs> underlined. Reaching to my Manchari Swarup. Worldly people cannot understand this ecstasy. Who else but a person who has awakened his internal identity can address Radharani like this, calling her Kalyani. Silabilva Manga Thakur glorified the jingling of Sri Govinda's angle bells in his Krishna Kanamrita. May the sweet jingling of the jeweled angle bells of the gopi lover, Krishna, the lover of Radha, that sounds like the cooing of the swans in a lotus forest of the Yamuna River, be manifest in my mind. Sula Krishna Das Kaviraj writes in his commentary on this verse, that the chingling of Krishna's angle bells is so relishable because he is following Srimati Radhika at that time. Then how can we describe the sweetness of the chingling of Sri Radhika's angle bells? Again, it's like also beautiful. Sila Krishna Das Kaviraj writes in his commentary on this verse that the jingling of Krishna's angle bells is so relishable because he is following Srimati, Srimati Radhika at that time. Then how can we describe the sweetness of the jingling of Sri Radhika's angle bells when she is followed by Govinda? Underline. Yes. Understand this. Yes. I... This is the rhythm. And this is... Rhythm. I feel also... Yeah. Even the Krishna is following the Radhika's bell. And we follow Krishna. If then we have to also do this. Means everyone, part and partial of his spiritual life, we have to make one rhythm. That his his nature has to come. We have to follow the jingling of others. Then your anchor bells, your work will be fruitful. If you jingle and other jingle different way, it will not result will come. It should be in one rhythm. And in one melody. And that is a spiritual life. Mm-hmm. Read again. May the sweet ching Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj writes in his commentary on this verse that the chingling of Krishna's angle bells is so relishable because he is following Srimati Radhika at that time. Then how can we describe the sweetness of the chingling of Sri Radhika's angle bells? Wow. Which he is following by Govinda. Govinda, who is the creator of all universe, who follow jingling bell of Radhika. She is also bell is very nice coming mellow. But she why is come nice coming mellow? Because she is following 
द बर्न ऑफ राधिका सी श्री कृष्णा यू आर मोर बेटर देन मी हम्बलनेस इज कमिंग ईगो इज नॉट इवन टू कृष्णा material world teaches to be in ego you jingle yourself they will jingle others but here is not like that we have to make the jingling my jingling with others feelings how much you make this together then it become more beautiful these are the practice of his spiritual life and if i like to follow krishna i have to run this why he is doing like that what a beauty of his jingling krishna is not to describe it is so beautiful but why is beautiful because see he is following the jingling bell of radhika mm-hmm. that the beauty <laughs> not he is doing his jingling bell for him he is mm-hmm. read again Krishna Das Kaviraj writes in his Loudly. writes in his commentary on this verse that the jingling of Krishna's angel bells is so relishable mm. because he is following Srimati Radhika at that time then how can we describe the sweetness of the jingling of Sri Radhika's ankle bells when she is followed by Govinda. Understand? I can feel this. Mm-hmm. I can feel this. Understand? Govinda means hmm? there is it's coming together it's no separation that one is Govinda is jingling bell the bell is very beautiful why you become beautiful <coughs> because he is following radhika's jingling bell yeah. because she bring this point very important in our in spiritual life yeah. we jingle but we jingle in our mood and we don't bother for other thinking jingling means thinking behaving activities everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right and and i feel also that this is the highest harmony which exists she There's is the no kalyani means she is create giver of harmony radhika mm-hmm. and krishna is just the creator and it this prem this it has to be came together yeah then it becomes beautiful yes more oneness yes oneness and and at the same time it's like 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 anurag both sides yeah it becomes sweeter more na exchange mm-hmm. it's like talking in between yeah the chimera mm-hmm. 
ये लाई है वो कमल गरम है ना वहाँ तो कोई है नहीं बेटा यही सो ठंड लग रहा है उसका दो तीन कम्बल कुछ खाएंगे अभी कोई है वहाँ पर अभी फोन की जो गलिया बन तो यही ले आए यही पर कम्बल है ओढ़ लो सो यहाँ पर थोड़ा कहा पिलो जो नहीं तो सॉफ्ट कैन यू गिव वन सॉफ्ट अंदर में लगा हुआ है सॉफ्ट हीटिंग लगा हुआ कहा बेड के नीचे हीटिंग लगा हुआ एज यू लाइक इफ यू लाइक टू गो बट देर इज नो वन देर यू नीड प्लैंकेट यू प्लैंकेट नहीं तो मेरे बिस्तर पर सो ओपन कर लो हीटिंग पर सो आज यू लाइक या Maybe a hot tea or something. Mm-hmm. Can I have water cooking? What you want to take? Krishna. तो उसको मंगवा देते खा के जाओ ना बुलाओ फोन कर दो उसको बोलो नंबर भी नहीं क्यों यहाँ ले आएगा जो उसको और लो ठीक से बैठो Swans are eating lotus stems by the bank. Oh, people, Liana, basement was. Hmm. Here it's warmer. It's better if you stay here. Outside it's very cold. In the room up there. Is... Give this one more. No, I have one, two, or four. Take another one. Maybe if I'm on that side, I'm just gonna leave. Huh? Over oh, there, maybe it's much more warmer than here. Hmm? Oh, because when I'm like this, I feel cold mm. and shiver. Come here, son. Come here, son. तुम कपड़ा बहुत कम पहनते हो यार क्या बता स्वॉन्स आई थिंग low to stems by the bank of the yamuna ah. to enhance the beauty of their voices thinking if by eating these lotus stems my voice could only attain as least lotus stems is this what is lotus stems it's the a lotus, flower the, or this oh, is the this is the 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 stengel stengel ah the stengel stem the stem what seed Lotus stem, the stem is the stengel in German. What in in English? Uh, St- lotus stem. Stem. Stem is the this part, the long part, under the, the long part. Stengel. Ah. Stengel. Not on the flower. Not this stem. Not stems. the flower. The stem is what holds the, in the water. St- yes. Yeah, the water stem is what holds the lotus flower. Okay. Mm. This they eat. Yes. Mm-hmm. Again, mm. if but. Uh, <coughs> So swans are eating lotus stems by the bank of the Yamuna to enhance 
the beauty of their voices, mm. thinking, if by eating these lotus stems, <clears throat> my voice could only attain at least a thousand part of the sweetness of the chingling of Govinda's angle bells. Mm. Just as a pupil hopes, he can sing or explain just as good as his teacher can in the future. What then to speak of the sweetness of the jingling of Sri Radhika's angle bells? Srila wow. Prabhupada Saraswati writes, when can I see <clears throat> Sri Radha with her charming form shyly looking down at her own toes when she sees the moonlike face of Krishna, the king of relishes from afar <clears throat> and the steps along with chinging angle bells? The endless streams of Mahabhav that gush from Radhika's limbs when she experiences the ecstasy of seeing Krishna sprinkle her angle bells and make their jingling sound like an ocean of nectar. Sri Raguna Das says, Please let me relish just one drop of the sweet nectar of this jingling. His heart is filled with this strong desire and this desire always increases causing him to lament like this. Words cannot really describe these lamentations. Through these prayers, the absorption of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami can be experienced. Good for you. Preach now. Very good. Yeah. Not everyone can be addressed so lovingly with Kalyani, all auspicious Swamini. The sweetness of this address does not indicate the heart's perception of anything from this material world. These transcendental pastimes bloom up within the heart in such a way that nothing from the visible world can be perceived within the heart anymore. Material consciousness muttons the heart of the aspirant. Muttons means schmelzen. Yeah, this sozusagen verschmutzt so. Ah. This is, uh, Makes dirty. Mm -hmm. This experience cannot be ha had through mere try knowledge, but only through pure love, mm -hmm. characterized by an intense feeling of mindness. The great sage Sugadeva was astonished by the feelings of mindness felt towards Krishna by his loving devotees in Braja. And he told Mahal Parikshit, the Lord who is called Atokshaya, he who is not perceivable through the material senses has no insight no outside, no before and no after. He's pervading the whole world, west to east, inside and outside. <coughs> and his form 
in the world itself. But now he allowed himself to be bound to grinding mortar by his Gobi mother, just like an ordinary <coughs> mortal human child. Here, the all-pervading Lord loses his omnipotence at the hands of his loving devotee. What is impossible in the world of tattva, spiritual truth, becomes possible in the world of lila. Or again, the, again, he explained. What is impossible in the world of tattva? Tattva, <coughs> you know tattva. Yes. This reasoning room. and importance. This is true. Tattva. Yes. Mm. It's possible. Mm-hmm. By Lila, pastime meditation. It's impossible with Tattu. Mm-hmm. Mm. Lila, all is possible. Yeah. <coughs> Then, in this vision, everything became like a Lila. Impossible. Approach easy. Mm. Huh. <coughs> wow. Mm. <laughs> hmm. Here, the all-pervading Lord loses his omnipotence at the hands of his loving devotee, mm-hmm. what is impossible in the world of tattva becomes possible in the world of Leela. Although Krishna is the Supreme Lord who cannot be perceived even by great mystics, he still allows his cowherd boyfriend, Sridham, to mount his shoulders after he lost the game. The Supreme Lord, whose lotus feet cannot even be perceived by the greatest mystics, now holds his lotus feet on the chests of his cowherd boyfriends. There is no comparison to the amorous relationship a devotee can have with the Lord. His beloved is sitting in a kuncha, being angry with him, and the Lord stands at the kuncha gate with tear-filled eyes like a beggar, like an offender. <coughs> Manamai, proud Radhika, then angrily rebukes him, saying, Go, Madhava, go, Keshava. Don't speak your false words to me. Just follow that girl who removes your sorrow. O lotus-eyed one, Brahma really becomes manifest when there develops a feeling of he or she is mine. Lord Brahma said, Everyone may say that he knows you in full, Let them know it. What more can I say, O Lord? I cannot perceive your greatness with my mind, body or words. But in Braja, a tailor will come up to Krishna with a yardstick to see what his size is. That is the wonderful power of the love of Braja. The address Kalyani is illuminated by the sweet luster of Radha and Krishna's mutual relish of each other. The Acharyas have taught we must see Shyamasunda from Radharani's perspective 
and Radharani from Shyamasunda's perspective. <coughs> Sri Krishna bestows auspiciousness on the world, but Srimati Radhika bestows auspiciousness, auspiciousness even on him. Sri Govinda considers himself blessed when he attains Radhika's company. He feels that his world is empty without her and she feels the same towards him. Prisavano's daughter thinks, I fell in love with he who can never be possibly <coughs> attained. And out of love, I cannot even die of shame. There is no end to the chastisement of my superiors. I am completely controlled by others. What a contrary condition. Why don't I die? The parrots can see Krishna, but there is no way for me to see him. Shamasundara also cries for Radhika all night, missing her. Also, he is Ananda Ghan Vigraha, the very form of intense, transcendental bliss. And when he opens his eyes, he thinks, he sees his mother giving him a cloth that is yellow, like Haldi. In this way he remembers her again. Who in this world knows how to love like her? Still Shyama did not manage to experience her love fully. So he accepted her mood and complexion and showed an anurag similar to Radhika's as Sri Goranga. During the final 12 years of his manifest appearance, Sri Goranga was burning in the fire of that love in separation. What a condition for the embodiment of transcendental bliss. Each pore of his hair was on fire. That is the, ag the agony of Krishna's Kalyani Karini, Shiradika, who acts for Krishna's welfare. With his own hand, Krishna completed a verse of Gita Govinda with the words, Radhe, give me your generous lotus feet. It is as if Krishna said to the poet Chayadev, O Jayadev, why are you hesitating to write this down? My whole life is fulfilled when I attain this lotus feet. Who else knows how to love but ye? The whole world tells me, give, give, only she says, she says, take, take. She worships Krishna in a form that fulfills his desire and thus the Puranas call her Radhika. She is the queen of the Kuncha cottage who makes eager Shyam enjoy so much as if he is a beggar getting a meal in the royal palace. Shilaraguna Da says, You are making everything auspicious for Krishna. We are very happy to see that. When will your angle bells that jingle while you fulfill all of Shyama's desire remove my deafness 
so that I will not desire to hear anything else anymore. The jingling of these angle bells takes place when the Shyama Ras is relished. But these angle bells don't just <coughs> jingle straight away. They jingle within this relish. This sound will awaken such devotional yearning that the ears do not want to hear anything else anymore. That is the poetic secondary meaning of the word materia or deafness. Hearing material sound vibrations like radios, traffic, mundane topics and so is also meant by deafness here. In this connection, Sri Krishna says, that which is night to all beings in that state of transcendental bliss, the self-controlled saint keeps awake. And that temporary material happiness in which all beings keep away is night to the seer. Then Sri Chakra Das sees a sweet playtime through his spiritual eyes. Radha and Krishna dance the Rasa. Krishna stands still and Radhika's angle bells give the rhythm to the sweet tune of his flute, which is the emperor of sounds and increase that sweetness. Meanwhile, Shyama relishes the sweet jingling of Radhika's angle bells, as well as the sweetness of his own flute playing, which is like an ocean of sweetness. That sound, that tune, is the great opulence <coughs> of the kingdom of God. His lotus-like mouth makes the flute play the sounds of Brahma. This sweetness makes everything sweet and reverses the natural behavior of all living beings. It stuns the moving creatures and it causes the trees to get goose pimples of ecstasy. In this way, the jingling of Radhika's angle bells causes the ocean of sweetness of Krishna's flute song to increase. Srila Rupa Goswami wrote, O oh, all-pervading Lord, when will my ears attain the regal opulence of the best of sound vibrations when I hear your flute song which is mixed with the chingling of Uchesvaris, Radhikas, angle bells that defeats the sweetness of the warbling of Lord Brahma's swan and that delights my dull ears. The dullness Rupa Goswami mentions is the same as the deafness Das Goswami mentions in this verse. Shyama is the relisher of the chingling of Srimati's angle bells and the relish of the sweetness of this nectar ocean awakens into Lassie's heart through Shyama's relish. Then, suddenly, one ankle bell falls off Swamini's lotus feet and stops jingling. It is as if something is missing then. To 
Ruthie stretches out her hand to put the anger belts back on and then suddenly the spiritual vision disappears, leaving Sri Raguna Das to lament. <clears throat> when will the chingling sound of your anger bells remove my deafness? Alas, Srimadhi Radhike, O embodiment of auspiciousness, my ears are incomparably deaf, and the sound of your anger bells is like an ocean of nectar. When will this sound enter? into my ears and increase the bliss that I desire there, thus destroying the disease of deafness at the root. Here ends. I repeat again the beginning. O oh, Kalyani, auspicious or beautiful girl, when will the chingling of your anger bells that is like an ocean of nectarian ras cure my deafness? Radhe. This is Sravanam listening. What I listen, it's very effective in life. Read another one, thirteen he was reading. Read that. Only sloka read. Very beautiful. Mm. Listen. Thirteen. Oh my goddess, when you go out. Loud to, little. Oh my goddess, when you go out to meet Krishna in the moonlit night, your eyes fearfully move in all directions like bumblebees turning the whole forest into pu pure lotus petals. <clears throat> this person, not to be seen by these eyes. Again. Oh my goddess, when you go out to meet Krishna in the moonlit night, your eyes fearfully move in all directions like bumblebees turning the whole forest into blue lotus petals. Wow. Now Radhika, your whole paragraph is this. Radhika become bumblebee and he is looking the blue petal means uh, Krishna. Mm. Lotus petal is Raj, Radhika. Mm. But here Radhika is doing this. So like she becomes Bambubis. She becomes Krishna today. Bambu. Mm. B. Human. Mm -hmm. yeah. Today mm -hmm. she is B. Mm. Like a bee searching to Krishna. Yeah. This whole paragraph words not leave, then I cannot explain the right thing. What? In morning I say Radhi Krishna is searching to Radhika because the beginning is Radhika. Read yes. again. Oh my goddess. You have to read when I say to read, the whole thing you have to read. When you go out... When you go out, Radhika is going out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To meet Krishna mm. in the moonlit night, mm. 
your eyes fearfully move in all directions. Like bumblebees mm. turning the whole forest into blue lotus petals. Just now, different meaning is yeah. this. Why? Because whole line has to read. Yeah. When you read from the bumblebees, what is the read that? Eh? <coughs> Says? Well, be, read bumblebees from there. Like bumblebees no, turning the whole... Whole form. line more. Then the whole... All, <coughs> oh my goddess, when you go out... No, to, that, no. Ah, yes, read. <coughs> Oh my goddess, mm. when you go out to meet Krishna mm. in the moonlit night, mm. your eyes fearfully move in all directions like pum- bumblebees mm. turning the whole forest mm. into blue lotus petals. Yeah. Is this person not to be seen by these eyes? I understand, Gurudev, um, because with her restless glances, no, her eyes are blue. No, this is now different meaning. Radhika is there. I, uh, I am, uh, bamboo if you say, then is a Krishna. Mm-hmm. Without beginning of line, it becomes bamboo Then bamboo is Krishna. Mm-hmm. Then he is searching what? To the blue petal. Blue petal means Radhika's blue sari. And here is different. If mm-hmm. when the whole line you read, it becomes different meaning. Radhika is searching in the forest like a bamboo bee. Like a mm-hmm. bamboo bee. She. Krishna is bumblebees, not Krishna is bumblebees. Radhika becomes bumblebees and his eyes is turning like a Krishna. He's searching where Krishna is. To read it again and again. Yeah. Again, no yes. rush. Past. No rush. No. Yes. We have to repeat and repeat and no word missing like this. Yeah, even tomorrow I would like to repeat it. Everything. It was so deep and so very deep. Beautiful. Very beautiful. Every time you read, new things come. It's so nice. Yes. Mm. That makes it read the different paragraph, more deep thing you see. So beautiful. Yeah. Yes. I and if you no know, repeat two, three times, you will not understand. <coughs> no. Pre- Slow <coughs> and repeating, yeah. only repeat this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go on. I have a, a kind of question, but I don't know. It was the same that I was starting to ask before we started this paragraph, but I don't know if I can. Uh, ask the question in the right sense. It was before the para, the uh-huh. uh, about the teeth, teethness, taupeit. Deafness. Deafness. Yeah. Taupeit, yeah. <coughs> Something is. I'm searching really the question because I know it's going about smaranam. But on the same time, I have the feeling that deafness is, when this is going with the clingling, for me it means one-pointed connection. Then when this happens, deafness is going also for all sounds, because in all sounds I can hear the klingeling. So it means deafness is going from 
I see power, it's a separation, it's not any more material um, sounds. It's coming because I'm meditating on Radha Krishna, so every sound becomes like this klingeling from the bells. So other sounds, what I am listening before, <coughs> I become deaf. I cannot listen that. I am listening ah. diff- only b- jingling bell. Ah. This is deafness. From other sound, b- what we are listening, I become deaf. Yeah. I cannot listen that. I am listening one pointed, ah. only jingling of Radhika. Okay. That's the point. not the same meaning like I took. Yeah. So I cannot a little bit try to accept sounds who make me deaf, that I say, okay, you know, I don't enter in what is coming from the radio, Mm. but I just see it's a form to express. Yeah. The meaning will change. Actually, ear will not deaf, but my understanding will be jingling. Yes. The ear is there, so it can listen, but we will search jingling only. Yes. We will search Radhika's jingling is happening. And if not, we transform in our mind because we only want... That jingling. That jingling. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that is the point. So we need to be like Zauberer, Maji, Maji. Maji. Yeah. Mm, magic man. Magic man, we transform everything. We need a glass. What show me the right subject? Uh, what do you say? The big ah, the make, loop. loop. Make the small magnifying. Magnifying. Magnifying, magnifying, yeah. magnifying. We have to magnifying glass. Magnify, vergrößern. Oh, magnify, genau. Magnify glass. Yeah. <laughs> See that reality. <laughs> I think we became so crazy, we became uh, mad when we not can see everything yeah. from this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is the point. <laughs> oh, Jay. So we need magnifying ears <coughs> yes. to, to, <laughs> to, yes. to and, listen that. You know, and the main thing is our listening. That may thing is listening, yes. Because you see in the Shastra Sravanam, Dan yeah. Kirtanam. Yes. Dan Kirtanam is coming from mouth. Mm. Sravanam is coming from ear. Yeah. Exactly. You then know. what is third? Smaranam. 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 Then coming to mind. <laughs> yeah. Then every time things start again. (laughs) (laughs) Now here is there, you see? Read this for the line. This is a meditation. (laughs) For the lines? About the deafness? No, more after. Then start reading the purple of the commentary, the notes. Yeah. Every verse of Vilap Kuju Manchali shows the sweetness of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami's love for Srimati Radhika. Each verse is able to submerge the practicing devotee into an ocean of sweet spiritual meditation. In verse 11, Sri Raghunadas prayed that his head may be blessed by Sri Radhika's touch. Blessed touch. Berührung. Berührung. In verse 12. Ed, Ed. What is yes. Loud little. In verse 11, Sri Raghunadas prayed that his head may be blessed by Sri Radhika's touch. <coughs> In verse 12, he prays for the benediction of his ears. Mm. 
And here he prays for blessings through the eyes. Mm-hmm. You see? These are the senses. Mm-hmm. So eleven is also much very important to go deep. In this way, he hopes that all his senses will contact the supreme objects, Sri Radhika's form, fragrance, touch, sounds, and flavor. Wow. Touch, sound, and flavor. Mm. Because he can be served with the senses. The Lord is named Rishikesh. <clears throat> the devotee makes his senses blessed by the performance of sadhana. I have become very restless by tasting even a single drop of the memory of the divine nectar ocean of sweet rasa that is Yugalaki shore. Although Sri Raguna does Who is becoming restless? I is who? I have become very restless. Who who is I? This is a uh, 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 Raguna. Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami. Rati Mandir is there. Okay. Although Sri Raghunath Das is eternally liberated, he still relishes the sweetness of devotion in practice. How to do practice? That, mm-hmm. that you ask in question. So from eleven on words to read and make it in life they practice. Practice in life. Eleven, twelve and thirteen. That shows how relishable devotion is. Even in the stage of practice uh, sadhana bhakti, and that some prema is already present, even in that initial stage. The savior that comes from sadhana removes all consciousness of the external world and all external endeavors will then be connected with the heart's eagerness to attain the beloved deity. Thirst for loving devotion is the very life force of sadhana. And if one performs one sadhana well, this thirst will surely awaken. How eager a person like me is for sense gratification. Even in my dreams, I see only sense objects. Those who do bhajan will think only of their beloved deity. Sula Vishwanatha Chakravati describes the effect of prema on the heart of the loving devotee as follows. In the stage of Sadan, the devotee is still bound by hundreds of thousands of robes of minus to words, possessions, money, family, and friends. But when Prema appears, these robes will easily become spiritualized and will tightly bind 
the devotee to the beauty of the Yugala Kishore's transcendental form, qualities and playtimes. Prema rises like the sun, making the darkness of ignorance and the stars of all other human pursuits fade from the sky of the heart. In any good life of sadhana, there must be some experience like this. How many things don't I always miss in my life? But I never miss Radharani. My mind is absorbed in thinking of sense objects. I'm not enthusiastic to do bhajan and I don't experience how insignificant this world is. I could not establish a sweet relationship with Radharani. What kind of a devotee am I? An aspirant should rebuke himself like that. When taste for bhajan awakens, the material world seems like a burning forest fire and the devotee weeps for want of the service of his beloved deity. Siddhanautam Das Thakur sings, O Lord, O ocean of mercy, my body burns in the false network of Maya. And when the Lord asks, do you only want freedom from that net then? Then he says, no, not just that. Then maybe you would like to see me sporting in Vaikunda or Twaraka? No. Naritam answers the Lord in the next couplet. When will I attain the company of the Shakis, string flower garlands in Brindavan and hang them around Radha and Krishna's necks? Being a Manchari. I will stand before them and fan them with the yucktail fan and I will anoint their limbs with a guru and sandalwood scents. On the order of the shakis, I will serve them betel leaves and I will decorate them with tilak and sindura. I will witness the moonlight faces as they play the funny playtimes and I will seat them on a lion throne. When will the day come that Naratam does see this sweet pastimes? My mind yearns for their mercy. At home, before Sri Radhika goes on Apishar rendezvous, the Shakis ask her, Radhe, why don't you sleep a little before we go out? Sri Radhika then says, No, 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 no need. I have to stay up the whole night. Sleeping will only divert my mind. So she sits up the whole night with closed eyes. She has to walk in the deep darkness over the slippery paths <coughs> of Bracha. So in the daytime, she throws some water over the courtyard and starts slipping and sliding around the prepare, to prepare herself for the night trip. Before she goes, she closes all doors and windows of her home. The Shakis ask her, Radhe, why are you making everything dark? You cannot even see where you walk anymore. She Radhika replies, Oh Ray, I'm just training myself 
for going out later tonight. When she sees the picture of a snake at her home, she shivers of fear and terror. But later, when she's out on the forest path and she encounters a real live snake, she fearlessly covers the jewel on its hood so that her superiors won't be able to see her in their shining light. And she even covers the snake's mouth with her own hand, afraid that its hissing will be heard by her superiors. That's how she is. Sometimes softer than a flower, and then sometimes harder than a thunderbolt. Wow. I'm soft again, sir. That's how she is. Sometimes softer. No, no. Paragraph, please. That's the point. At home, before Sri Radhika goes on Apishar, on a rendezvous, the Shakis ask her, Radhe, why don't you sleep a little before we go out? Shiradika then says, No, no, no need. I have to stay up the whole night. Sleeping will only divert my mind. So she sits up the whole night with closed eyes. She has to walk in the deep darkness over the slippery paths of Braj. So in the daytime, she throws some water <laughs> over the courtyard and starts slipping and sliding around to prepare herself for the night trip. Before she goes, she closes all doors and windows of her home. The Shakis ask her, Radhe, Why are you making everything dark? You cannot even see where you walk anymore. Shiradika replies, Oh, Ray, I'm just training myself for going out later tonight. When she sees the picture of a snake at her home, she shivers of fear and terror. But later, when she's out on the forest paths and she encounters a real-life snake, She fearlessly covers the jewels on its hoods so that her superiors won't be able to see her in their shining light. And she even covers the snake's mouth with her own hand, afraid that its hissing will be heard by her superiors. That's how she is. Sometimes softer than a flower and sometimes harder than a thunderbolt. Radhe, Radhe, Govinda.